Mr. Marlowe. Sure you want to go through with this? I'll take the case, Charlie. I don't like to repeat myself. Why don't you uh, lay low for a little while? That, uh, that I could do. You know, I just want to say thank you, Mr. Marlowe. Oh, uh, Charlie, uh, call me Pod, by the way. I insist. Uh, you want a drink? Yeah, I could use one. You know, for a guy that drinks as much as you, Todd, that bottle never runs dry, does it? Always full. Just the way I like it. That's good stuff. Well, I better get going, Todd. And, uh, be careful. Not everyone shares the same opinion as you on this case. Charlie, was it? Not even a hello? Todd? Phil? Be seeing you. Tell me you didn't take that case. You're smarter than that. As a matter of fact, I did. I'd be very careful if I were you, Todd. You got eyes watching. If I were you, I'd drop this case as soon as I could. Yeah? That man needed my help, and I offered him. Something you wouldn't know about. Be seeing you. I'm assuming you got the package. It's a small present to Mr. Marlowe. Todd Marlowe. His address is 61 Fremont Avenue. Now listen very carefully. Marlowe's got some friends looking over his back and we don't want any heat on us. So let's keep it quiet at first. Start with that gin. He keeps it under his desk. He's quite fond of it actually. In a way. We're actually doing him a favor. Not a bad way to go out if you ask me. Add a few drops from our bottle to his, and it should do the trick. Keep a lookout for any deviations to the plan. When the job's done, clear the marks, erase the evidence. You know, the usual routine. And if he's still breathing, take care of that too. Feel free to uh, improvise. I need this done by midnight.
Sit down, Todd. Jesus Christ. Todd Marlowe. I bet you're thinking you wish you dropped this case by now. You know I'm a stubborn bastard. Yeah. But this was no ordinary case though, was it? No, it wasn't. Maybe that's why I decided to take it. Maybe. Or maybe you're just stupid. Maybe. Do what you gotta do, Phil. We'll get to that. I am, however, feeling a bit nostalgic sitting in this office. It's changed a lot, you know? Say, uh, you still got that junior yours? Yeah, it's in the bottom drawer. Ah. You've been busy, huh? Must be hard playing real life devil's advocate. Yeah. This case of Charlie. A common eye would see a righteous man trying to do the right thing. You know, help out the little folk, make ends meet. But I got my own theory. Yeah? What's that? It's that you're too drunk to know right from wrong. Is that right? God damn right. Pour me that gin. Now, uh, speaking of Devil's Advocate, I want to tell you, Marco was at my place yesterday. Remember him? Vinny's cousin? Little Pollock? Yeah. Nobody believed him, Todd. But you did. You're the only one that helped us find out about Mabel. Yeah, and if it wasn't for you, saving Vinny's ass, we'd never solve the damn case. Yeah, it cost me a bit of my leg now, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. Simple times, I guess. Anyways, Marco told me Casper's on this case. <sighs> Apparently, Casper hired him to take care of it. Who's, who's him? You know who. Phil, we gotta get out of here. Let's get out of here. Sit down, Todd! Phil, come on. What are you waiting for? You rat bastard, it's too late for that. You know that's not true. Shut up! It's too late! Now, 
The reason I came here was, uh, 